So I'm going to hear how customers are leveraging Traitware to provide insights to admins on the key utilization of the apps, not to mention the tasks users perform within them. And Traitware are bringing next-gen authentication to the Citrix marketplace. The passwordless login is already here. So if you're tired of credential management and risk, you should enjoy today's episode as we're going to discuss Traitware's mission to substantially increase user and company security while also simplifying access to digital and physical resources through the elimination of the need for usernames and passwords. And I think we can all agree that can only be a great move. Thanks for uh, having me, Neil. My name is Heath Spencer. I'm the CEO of Traitware. We work in the authentication space. We were founded on uh, resolving the frustrations and risks around username and passwords and uh, have successfully done so. Well, I'm excited to get you both on today because it seems that we all unlock our smartphones and iPads and even laptops now with our fingerprint, face. There's so many different forms of authentication, but of course, we're all struggling to remember those myriad of passwords that we've all accumulated over the years. And there's an increasing argument that it's now finally time to replace that 1961 legacy technology. So Heath, can I ask you, you talk a little bit about the history of the password as we know it today. So within five months of username and password being born in 1961, we had our first incident of credential misuse, uh, one where they were just a list that was accessible and, and replayed. So people have been trying to solve this equation of how do we improve authentication and access to a, a resource or a service in a better fashion. And you mentioned at the beginning of the call that today we have the ability to use biometrics on devices that we're carrying around, whether it's our smartphone or our laptop. And how do we use that in a way to advance, you know, replacing legacy login? And that's what we really focused on and how we did that in a unique way is, is where we're at today. So that's a bit of the history of the password. And it really wasn't until recent times that, innovation and technology allowed us to even create a solution like we have today, um, you know, which is what's exciting about what we're doing, you know, partnered with Citrix in the Citrix Ready environment is they're leveraging innovation and technology to advance how we use systems to make them more secure as well in virtual environments. And it's, it's really a, a, a wonderful fit together. In layman's terms, if you think about a simple access point of the human to machine entry point, right? So anywhere that you're accessing a system that currently has legacy login, like we just discussed with a username and password field box, we replace that front door lock with a passwordless solution using a device you're already carrying on a daily basis. So we have a unique way of tokenizing your mobile device, your smartphone, or you could use a tablet if you wanted to, but we, you know, we know most people are carrying their phone everywhere they go. And according to Verizon and AT&T and their studies, uh, most of us won't leave that more than three feet away from us on any given day. Um, so we looked at rather than having to create extra external hardware tokens, et cetera, let's use something we're already carrying. So we looked at that and how do you leverage the biometric ca capacity of that device and keep that in a unique way secure. So what's really exciting is the way that we leverage biometric authentication, the user possesses that identity the entire time, uh, it, it, especially if you're using an iOS device. Um, when you re register your biometric on that device, it is created and stored in the secure enclave, and it's opaque to the rest of the world, including Apple. Uh, they don't know the mathematical representation that that is, and we don't know the mathematical representation is. So when you're looking at privacy regulations like GDPR or now California CCPA, et cetera, this allows the user to maintain possession of that biometric identity template and we never use it. Then what we do at Traitware and what we've gotten our first two patents issued on is the way that we then register your device as a token, creating multi-factor authentication, something you are, something you have. We have other layers that we can add on there, whether it's a geofence or a knowledge factor from an image sequence, but most people just are okay and are secure enough with just two factor today, right? 
So we use biometric and a secure token. The unique way that we register your device actually becomes a live biometric in essence. It's a dynamic token. We look at the way that you use the device in different areas without looking at any PII. We just look at a mathematical representation of the way that you interact with your device. And the way that you interact with your device is so different from the way that I interact with my device or the way that Anil interacts with his device that it separates you to one in 300 billion. That's how unique your interaction with your device is. We then take that mathematical representation and we leave, leave it on the phone. And then we stick an example of that representation on a separate authentication server. Every time I go to authenticate to any resource, the tokens have to match with that within an allowable percentage of change. So what we registered your device as a token has to then match with the token that's on the authentication server within an allowable percentage of change. And the reason that there's an allowable percentage of change is as you use your device, it evolves and changes and your representation changes. So it then creates a dynamic token that's being re authenticated each time that you authenticate to access a service. Then any service that you want to access, like Citrix, whether it's workplace or through the Netscaler gateway, et cetera, there is a relying party trust between that service and the authentication server that's established through authentication standards such as SAML 2.0, OpenID Connect, OAuth, et cetera, that allows us to use a certificate-based tokenized authentication process that eliminates passwords entirely because you're relying just on managing a token versus managing legacy login. We, you know, this is why we fit so very well with Citrix and, and their Citrix Ready platform is that, you know, we, we look at, you know, again, going back to just replacing that front door lock of where a person needs to authenticate to a resource like Citrix Workplace and approaching it in this zero trust manner in the same fashion is instead of assuming that uh, just because they have the correct login credentials uh, doesn't mean that it's them. And with a passwordless solution like Traitware, we can use this zero trust model in the same way. And, you know, looking at phishing, credential management, et cetera, it is a ginormous cost to every business from small business to large enterprise. But the average cost of uh, password support, and this ties to uh, credential phishing, uh, the training around credential phishing in phishing attacks in general, uh, password help desk tickets, et cetera, the average cost is around $700,000 per enterprise business for managing those credentials and training the staff around credential phishing. Uh, any staff that you read today, and as Citrix is moving to take this posture of zero trust and really how do we do a better job of trying to reduce the threat vectors that we're facing with cybersecurity today, and that's where we believe that multi-factor authentication is a must have. It's no longer should be an option. If MFA is an option for a user, today in the enterprise world, only 25% of them are choosing MFA. And if it's a cumbersome process, they will do everything they can to uh, have it, you know, have a workaround, to not have to enter a one time passcode, et cetera. And it's on the on average today within the enterprise space is roughly three point eight to four million dollars on average for between ransomware and false wire transfers and everything else that's tied to someone replicating someone's access and then escalating their privileges with someone's credentials. And that's a lot of it is tied to credential management and credential phishing. The future is around authentication, whether it be password, MFA, and and the advantages in virtual environments too. What, what are your thoughts around that? You know, we've really focused on the one aspect mainly of the, of the person to the machine authentication part of it. And 
I do truly believe that biometrics are a major player in the aspect of authentication today. And different technologies are going to figure out how to leverage that. There are some unique cases in each environment is different. Whether you're addressing an internal person within a federal facility, what they're using for biometrics on site is probably going to be a little bit more stringent and not an option to use those, meaning they may be using a retina scan or a palm reader and it's all on premise, meaning that biometric template is going to be stored on site. Depending on where that's located, there are already states in the US, and I'm sure there's some places within GDPR where you have to then gain permission from that individual to use that biometric template and store that biometric template. There's actually a case in the US right now where a 16 year old is suing a amusement park because they captured his biometric identity without his permission when he bought a season pass to the amusement park. And, and that's a really interesting case and because they've got really strict privacy laws. The way that Traitware is achieving leveraging biometric authentication, as I mentioned earlier, leaves that template opaque to anyone outside, uh, to anyone really. Even the user can't see it and can't obtain it. Um, so it maintains that privacy aspect of it. So moving to the future of authentication, biometrics will play a huge part of it. Achieving it in a, a way that maintains privacy and security will be a key part of how that's achieved and enterprises need to look at how they're doing it and allowing their user and Anil mentioned this too there's a lot of BYOD in the space today allows the user to maintain that privacy and leverage modern authentication such as biometrics in the process of it. Moving on to the integration points and why we are such a simple play for Citrix and, and working really well together is I mentioned earlier in the call authentication standards and, and leveraging a framework that Citrix has already built in tying different applications together or different services together. And we can leverage authentication standards like SAML 2.0 or OpenID Connect to sit at that front door entry point of that environment. Um, because of integrations that we've built, there are aspects of single sign on what we're doing that enhance what Citrix has done with their environments and tying things together. A unique example that we have, and uh, really where we really actually discovered how well we fit with Citrix was we had an enterprise deployment within the healthcare space in the US that was in a unique situation where they were it was a software provider providing software to federally and state funded healthcare clinics. Because of this, they were under very strict federal regulations, had to meet in the US standards uh, FedRAMP certification. They were previously using RSA tokens as their one time passcode. Their system administrators, so for let's say 65% of their workforce, could just access Citrix Workplace and have all of their uh, virtual desktop environments and their applications accessible through that. And, and we sit in front of that environment very well for them. Some of their system admins, another 35% of their workforce, because of federal regulation, weren't allowed to use single sign-on for every environment. So those system admins were carrying around up to four or five individual RSA keys and had to have four to five unique identities, username and passwords, for each one of those siloed environments. So coupling Citrix with Traitware allowed us to give that user a single pane of glass on their mobile device as their token to access not only their workplace environment, but other, the other four siloed data sets that they needed to access from a single pane of glass. So combining Traitware through these authentication standards with Citrix and their other environments really truly enhanced that user's experience and the ability to access any of the five environments that they needed to access through a single pane of glass, leveraging those authentication standards. And again, allowing us to 
reduce credential management and move their system admins to managing just a secure token for each individual that really could be provisioned just in time for certain access through it one tick box through an administrative panel or allowing that SSO sign in to their workplace environments through Citrix Workplace or, or NetScaler for their ex external users as well. Um, and so, yeah, it's really, really simple to be plug and play with Citrix's tools for us through authentication standards. Fantastic. And, and Neil, is there anything that you'd like to share about why you work so well together with Traitware? Right. So so the key points are definitely uh, Traitware, uh, Traitware, Traitware provides uh, multi-factor authentication uh, uh, in, in, a, in a very unique sense, uh, uh, and, uh, and and their ability to support uh, SAML, OpenID Connect, uh, and, and 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 OAuth, which 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 are also compatible, and and something which uh, Citrix uh, NetScaler Gateway uh, 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 provides as an option for the customers to use. Uh, so, uh, so like he mentioned, the uh, the unique way of kind of capturing the biometrics and and uh, using uh, the uh, uh, users' own devices as their tokens instead of uh, instead of having to carry a lot of other uh, other uh, devices or or solutions to remember their. Uh, MFA tokens is, is something very unique, and and we were able to successfully validate their uh, solution with with our Citrix workspace, uh, and and providing one one more very unique solution for our joint customers to uh, leverage and and uh, to make their workspace even more secure. Excellent. And finally, Heath, of course, if there's anywhere uh, you can point the listeners in the direction for Traitware too, whether that be the marketplace or your own website. Yeah, so as Anil mentioned, uh, we are located in the Citrix Ready Marketplace. So the address that he mentioned, you can go directly there and then see the solutions that Citrix has validated and, and tested us for uh, within the Citrix Marketplace. So we're very honored and, and proud to be part of that marketplace with them and excited to work on future projects with them as they're releasing new solutions as well. Uh, you can also visit Traitware.com directly to learn a little bit more about us. Uh, there's lots of information there. And then you could email um, sales at traitware.com or you could email me directly if you want to talk to me directly at Heath Spencer or Heath.spencer at traitware.com as well. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. So many big talking points. I think the big one, of course, is that multi factor authentication is no longer an option. It should be mandatory now, right across the business landscape. But more than anything, I know time is precious. Just a big thank you for joining me today. Thank you both. Thank you very much for having me, Neil. Thanks, Heath. Uh, thanks, Neil. Thank you, Anil. Wonderful to spend time with all of you today.